everybody. It's Louisa from Now You're Cooking. Welcome to my kitchen. It's small but serviceable. A little crowded because I work at a kitchen store and I have a lot of stuff. Um, but it's nice. Everything's within reach and I love cooking in my, in my kitchen and I'm very happy to welcome you here today. Um, next week, um, so tonight I'm making Cornish pasties. Um, and this is a very traditional meal. It's basically a hand pie, a savory hand pie that the miners would take down in Cornwall, would take down into the tin and copper mines. Um, and it's great because you can eat it at room temperature. It's easy to hold. And I believe that they used to, to do the pin pricks for the steam, they do the uh, miners initials. So um, mine would say LE on it. Um, Anyway, so we're going to get started with that in just a sec. And um, next week we're going to be making bouillonada, which is a Catalan fish stew. It has um, potatoes and fish. We'll probably use cod or haddock or monkfish maybe. Um, and it has saffron on it and it's delicious. It's like a, you know, a bouillabaisse or any of the, the very famous kind of fish stews that you have around the Mediterranean. This is the Catalan version. Catalonia is the northeastern part of Spain. So uh, we're going to get started. The first thing that you want to do, um, we will be posting the link if it's not already on Facebook, we'll be posting that link in our comments. Um, and then it will also be attached to the link on um, YouTube when we get to that. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is make your dough because this needs to go in the fridge for a little while. Um, it's better if it goes in the fridge. It, it hardens up solid, solids up a little bit so it's a lot easier to work with. Um, and the other thing to know about this recipe is I've left everything in grams. This recipe comes from the Cornish Pasty Association. Yes, folks, there is a Cornish Pasty Association. Um, and so I left everything in grams. Um, I find it very accurate to weigh things um, rather than using cups and, you know, spoonfuls of things or whatever. Um, so I recommend if you don't have one, getting a good kitchen scale, um, not just for this, but in general, if you have a favorite recipe, if you weigh out your measurements, it's going to come out exactly the same every time, as opposed to, you know, if you scoop a cup of uh, flour and I scoop a, uh, scoop a cup of flour, I can guarantee they're going to weigh different amounts. So anyway, so I have weighed out 500 grams of flour and there is a teaspoon of salt in here. And then I am going to add the secret ingredients, lard and butter. Um, it takes 125 grams of butter. Um, mine is softened. Um, normally with pastry, I'd say use cold butter and cold Crisco, cold lard, whatever you're using. But in this case, it is room temperature. Um, and then I'm going to weigh out 120 grams of lard. Um, lard you can find in the baking section of your grocery store. It is not refrigerated. Um, you can refrigerate it if you want it to be um, a little bit more stiff. It's 125, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's going in. So, um, and you can use lard in pastry. You can use it in biscuits. Um, I don't use it for a lot of other stuff, so I'll probably put that right into the freezer. Um just so that, you know, next time I need lard, I've got lard, um, but it'll keep it a little bit fresher that way. So <clears throat> again, normally when I'm making pastry, I would do this by hand. You can do it in a mixer. You can do it in a food processor. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, but this particular recipe is going to be mixed a little bit more than you would a really flaky, really tender pie dough because you want it to be a little elastic -y and you want it because it's going to um, it's going to be wrapped around stuff and you want it to be, you don't want it to break apart. You don't want it to leak. Um, so if I was smart, I would have one of those shields. Oh, hello. This is Hugo. Welcome to cooking with cats. Get off. Um, thank you, Hugo. Uh, I was expecting one of the other ones, but you got Hugo this time. Uh, everyone wants the limelight. Um, so I am going to break up 
don't reach into a mixer while it's plugged in, um, especially while it's running. Um, probably would have been a good idea to break up my butter a little bit. I, as I said, it doesn't matter that much in this recipe because it's going to be overmixed, what I would call overmixed normally. Um, but it, that's why it's kind of poofing out of the bowl a little bit more, which it wouldn't do if I had cut my pieces a little smaller. Um, and just so you know, the cats don't usually get on the counter, but I do wash my counter a lot. So if I ever invite you to dinner, don't be afraid. So we're going to let this mix. So what you want is kind of a polenta cornmeal-y kind of texture to it, which is the same with any kind of pastry that you're cooking. I'm just going to grab some cold water to add to that. Um, so you don't, you don't want it like clumped with the butter or the lard in this case and the flour like in a ball. You want it very loose, very kind of like sand or like polenta. Um, but you do want most of the big pieces broken up in there and kind of mixed. So um, I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to open it so that if I stick my hand in there and it starts up again, I'm not going to hurt myself. So yep, so it feels pretty good. There are a couple of bigger pieces, but I think it's going to be fine. So here we go. And I am adding 175 milliliters of water, which is about three quarters of a cup. And you can hear the motor is slowing down a little bit because it's working pretty hard. And what's going to happen here, again, when you're making a nice flaky pie dough, you want it to... Um, you, want, you don't want to over mix it. You want to just mix in the liquid until it just forms a ball. But here, again, we're mixing, we're over mixing it because we want it to be a little elasticy. Just gonna get it off the paddle here. Um, so it's okay, and you can kind of see it's pulling away. It's not just coming apart in small lumps because um, it is starting to get a little elastic. I'm just gonna mix it a little bit more. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And that's probably pretty good right there. And you wanna refrigerate this for, I think it says maybe an hour or so. Um, and I will double check in just a sec so that it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm not gonna keep you watching for an hour while I twiddle my thumbs and it chills, I made a batch this morning, um, which I just took out of the fridge a little while ago. So there's that, and I'm gonna put it in a stasher. These, This is a new-ish shape for the stashers. This is a, um, stashers are a silicone uh, reusable Ziploc bag. And this is a great shape because it stands up. You could put soup or um, chili or whatever in there. You can use it for anything, but it's nice if you did want to put a liquid because it just stands up rather than falling over as you're trying to fill it. Um, stashers can go into the microwave. They can go into the oven. They can go into um, boiling water, and they can also go into the freezer and the fridge, obviously. So I'm just going to get the extra air out of there, and that's going to go right into the fridge in just a minute that's your dough and voila i have my dough that i made this morning and i gotta get it out of my bag there we go so i am going to cut this into six equal pieces and if you want to weigh them out you can just so you know they're exact um, or you can kind of guesstimate And I might, that one's a little small, I might just weigh these just to see how close we're getting. Um, you want them to be fairly close because you don't want a big one. You don't, you 
you want to be able to um, fit the same amount of filling. And as I recall last time I made these, they were each about 165 grams. Or 160 or something like that. And a gram is not very big, so as long as you're close. Well, that's pretty impressive. Three out of my six were 165 grams. Oh, those are all smaller. So we'll just take a little bit and add to that one. All right, so our fillings, and these are prescribed by the Cornish Pasty Association. You can use any filling you want. But traditional Cornish pasty has skirt steak, which I've cut into small pieces. A skirt steak is, what did we say? It's from the, cavity. I'm not going to use that word. It's from the cavity. <laughs> um, it is, it's a thin, not super tender, which is why we're cutting it into small pieces. It is not pre-cooked. It's going to cook right inside that dough and it's going to be delicious when it comes out. So skirt steak, onions, potatoes and they recommend something um, waxy like a red potato or a Yukon gold. These are Yukon gold and rutabaga. This is a rutabaga friends with flour on it. Um, they come covered in wax. I'm not exactly sure why that is but it must preserve them somehow. Um, it's very similar to a turnip. Turnips are smaller and turnips are white on the bottom with purple on the top as whereas you can see the rutabaga is like a yellow or orange with kind of a maroon top and they're a little bit bigger they're also a little sweeter so if you don't like turnip give this a try because it's not quite as um as bitter as a turnip um it's delicious mashed this used 150 grams so i still have like two-thirds of the rutabaga left. Um, I usually just boil it up, mash it with a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper, and it's delicious. Um, so anyway, that's a rutabaga. Rutabagas are also known in England as Swedes because they are Swedish turnips. So a Swede, if you see a recipe for Swede, it is a Swedish turnip. And you can see the um, it's kind of a pale, kind of peachy color. Um, and so that's going to go in. So we have our six pieces of dough here. And if you're wondering why I have this random plate sitting on the counter, it is because it is the exact size that I want to roll these into, which is, um, well, I say exact, and now I'm going to say it's eight to nine inches. Um, and I think the plate is exactly eight inches. So um, I'm going to, I've made a little ball, and I'm going to try to roll it out pretty round which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. So I'm turning it about a quarter turn, half turn, quarter turn, um, and you just want to keep rolling. And this dough has been refrigerated, as I said, and it's really nice to work with. Um, the last time I made these, I don't think I refrigerated it long enough, and they it was delicious, but the... Um, the dough tore a little bit so I had a little bit of a leakage so let's see how we're doing there pretty close pretty close we'll give it a little bit a little so and I am not going to tell you that these are going to be beautiful because they're not they're I mean they'll be great they'll be delicious they're not going to look like the photographs on the Cornish Pasty Association website. But they're going to taste good. Um, and that's all that really, really matters. I'm gonna get just a little bit of water to put on my fingers. <clears throat> okay, so there are a couple of different ways that you can crimp these. Um, one is to fold up the sides and crimp along the top like a spine. The other way is to fold it over and do it around the edge. So I'm going to do one of each. Um, as far as seasonings, it's just salt and pepper. Um, and I didn't use a whole lot of salt and pepper. They say, I think a sprinkle on each layer. I think that's a little too much for me. Um, so I'm going to use about a sixth of my beef. 
hoping that's about a sixth. So uh, these are these are measured out by um, by weight, and it makes six. You don't have to use all the filling, and you may find that um, that the dough isn't quite big enough for all the filling. Um, and you know, it doesn't have as much rutabaga as it does potato. And I might in the future use more rutabaga and less potato or not even use potato in it. Um, you can do whatever you want. Nobody is going to come. So it's a, these are protected. They have protected status. Um, so to call it a Cornish pasty in England, at least it has to have these ingredients it has to be made a certain way um and if you don't if you use turnip instead of rutabaga you cannot call it a cornish pasty if you use you know the wrong kind of meat or whatever um it probably doesn't matter what kind of meat as long as it's beef um but when you make these at home you can put anything you want in them and you can absolutely make them vegetarian use um a vegetarian or vegan um Crisco or uh, obviously not butter, obviously not lard, um, but you can make them vegan, you can make them vegetarian. But to have to call them Cornish pasties, they're supposed to be specific. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of water on my fingers. I'm just going to go around the edge because it will help. They don't say to do this, and I don't think it says it in the recipe, but after I made them last time, I realized they stick together a lot better if you do. So I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to squeeze the sides together. And then I'm going to crimp them like I would a pie. So I'm going to just give it a cute little pie crimp. Voila. I'm going to turn those little ends under. That is a Cornish pasty. I'm going to send this home with Heather for her dinner tonight. So I'm going to go H F so that she knows this one is for her and her husband doesn't eat it. So he knows this one is for her. There's our first Cornish pasty. And I can fit on a half sheet pan. I use the silicone liner, keeps your pans cleaner. Um, wicked easy to clean up. They can go right in the dishwasher. Um, and you can fit three of these on a half sheet pan easily. So two sheet pans in your oven. You are going to heat your oven to 375 and they're going to cook for about 50, 55 minutes. You want them a nice golden brown. Um, and we are going to do an egg wash, which I forgot to get out, but you can use um, straight egg or egg with a little bit of milk or water in it. Just whisk it up and just brush it on and that will give it a nice shiny coating. All right, so round two, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down. You don't wanna to put too much. And the nice thing about these silicone um, rolling mats is that you can, um, ooh, what's in there? <clears throat> Parsley from the counter earlier today or something. Um, anyway, you can roll these without, you know, whether it's a pie dough or whatever you're making, you can roll it out without using a whole lot of extra flour, which is just going to dry out your pastry and make it not as good. So I, I always take this with me if I'm going to be making pastry at somebody else's house I usually will take this with me because um, I want to make sure I have it to roll on and it just makes it so much easier what kind of rolling pin are you using? Um, this is a French style rolling pin um, and it is you can see it's tapered at the ends and it's a little wider in the middle um, and it's great for rolling out this type of thing don't ask me details about why because I don't know the answer and that is a good size. You can round this up if you want these to be perfect, which I don't really care about. You can round that up and make it just lovely and round. 
and voila. Again, I'm going to put my beef in. This side, this time I'm going to be folding it over. So I'm going to put the beef not right in the middle, but a little to the side. A little bit of onion, potato. The rutabaga. I definitely want more rutabaga. A little salt. If you don't like salt, don't put salt on. If you don't like pepper, don't put pepper. If you want rosemary in it, put rosemary in it. Just don't call it a Cornish pasty in the hearing of anybody from Cornwall. A little water around the edges. So they do this really beautiful, I think we attached to the recipes a couple of photographs and they do this really beautiful twisted edge, which I have not figured out how to do. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, so I'm just going to glue that down a little bit and then I'm going to fold it and roll it. And I think that this is more or less how they do it, but they do it in a way that makes it look like it's like rolled around the edge. It's just, they're beautiful. Um, and again, you want to try to get it nice and tight because you don't want leakage. A couple of holes there, but that's okay. And we'll make this one for Heather's husband. And this is really just to let the steam out so it doesn't get too soggy in there. So we have Charlie and Heather, and these are going to go into the oven, as I said, at 375 for about 50 to 55 minutes. Um, the recipe makes six of them. You can freeze them before you bake them, or you can bake them and then freeze them if you want to hold on to them, um, or you know if you don't if you can't eat six quickly enough. If you don't have anybody going down in the mines, the tin mines that, you know, to feed, um, you can freeze them and just take them out. Don't defrost them. Put them right into the oven and they probably take another five to ten minutes longer to cook. Don't leave them in too long, though. Um, and that is going to, believe it or not, the beef is going to be fully cooked. The veggies are going to be fully cooked. They're going to be tender. It's going to be so flavorful and um, they're just such a fun, a fun thing to make great for taking camping or hiking if you need lunch and you, you don't have a way to refrigerate stuff obviously not for four or five days but um you know take them out on the boat um they're just they're delicious they're really quick and easy to make and um and they're cornish pasties which is cool um so there's that cornish pasties everybody voila um, and only one cat intruder. So that's good. Um, and what else? So next week we're going to be making the bouillonada, which is a Spanish fish stew or fish chowder. Um, there's no dairy in it, but it is creamy. Secret, um, which you'll find out next week. Um, and then we're doing, uh, oh, for St. Patrick's Day, we're going to do an Ina Garten uh, stout Guinness stout brown bread which is fantastic Heather made some last week and it was really really good um, and then we're going to make homemade granola bars um, the week after that so lots of fun stuff coming up and thank you so much for joining me and coming into my kitchen and cooking with me and we'll see you again next week